Good morning and welcome to Equity Story Trade Watch, uh, 21st of June, um, Wednesday, middle of the week. And luckily for us, we've got Claude back. Uh, he's been away for a little while. Uh, he was a little bit sick with COVID. Um, unfortunately, it's a, not, a, not a fun illness uh, and it can hit you for a, a week or so. So I'm glad you're back and looking a bit better. Um, so let's hope you are on the right way to recovery. So thanks for coming yeah. back. Good, good to be back, Peter. Good to see you, and uh, good day to everybody. And I think it just shows, you know, you know, where do you join? Not with Dave. You're joining with me, right? So <laughs> priorities is very, very important here. It just shows. Yeah. Thank well, to, to be fair, I'm still testing positive, but I am feeling better. Great. All right. So let's go on with today's show. Uh, and and there is really not much announcements this morning, so we're not going to talk about too much of that. But I've got a very interesting. Thought of the week, and you provided it for me, which is thank you so much because I was like struggling this morning about ideas. But we're going to talk about stocks that's um, in indexes like ASX 300, all ordinaries, and getting to that stage of being included into the next index. And we're looking at good charts getting included in that index. So we're putting it all together and seeing what's possible for some of these stories uh, that are looking good on it technically and fundamentally. So I've got a nice list we'll go through and see where they are at the moment. Before we do that, you've got a disclaimer in front of you, of course, that we are going to be talking about stocks on a general advice only. Uh, every stock we talk about uh, just look fo focuses pretty much on the technicals and fundamentals. Okay, so just before we get onto that, because like I said, there's really no announcements to talk about. I just wanted to quickly mention what happened last night um, on the Dow and on the NASDAQ, and we had a long weekend in America. Um, so wasn't, I wasn't too sure what to expect really, to be honest, but it was a bit of profit taking. Uh, we've got two indexes that went down. How's it affecting us? Ah, we're okay. It's not too bad. We had a pretty good day yesterday, by the way. Um, maybe a bit of profit taking on some of the stories today, which is understandable. But generally speaking, um, we are probably going to be following the US now from now from the rest of the week. So we'll see what actually happens. Commodity wise, everything was fairly Steady, nothing really outlandish there either. So all up, um, yeah, let's see what happens. So saying that, let's move on to that thought of the week because really there's nothing other, other uh, announcements this morning to talk about. So I'm going to start the list, Claude. Uh, awesome. I said, we've got... Shall I give the introduction of, of yeah, the Yeah, absolutely. Going to the introduction. And one thing I'm just going to quickly before you do the introduction we are going to just concentrate on the all odds, right? So just outside the top 300, all odds companies, go 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 for it. So yeah, today, the, so as, as you guys would know, uh, you know, we've got billions of dollars sitting behind passive index funds, uh, which means when companies enter the ASX 300 and then even the ASX 200, there's some automatic buying <coughs> there. Um, so the idea was today, we're going to look at uh, basically companies that are on a good trend, that they're growing, and that they're not yet into the ASX 300. Now, when a company's in the all odds, but not the ASX 300, that is oftentimes, especially if it's a bigger company in the all odds, it's oftentimes because, uh, say, the founders have a big shareholding. And when S&P uh, looks at what it's going to include in the ASX 300, it includes um, not the normal market capitalization, but the float adjusted market capitalization, which means they will subtract what they call strategic holdings, which would include a large shareholding by the founder, for example. So in order for such a company to get into the ASX 300 and then the ASX 200, there are two main things that can happen. One is the founders or the strategic holders can cut, can start um, selling down some of their companies so that some of their shares, big pardon, so that can uh, increase the, the um, float adjusted market cap. Or also the share price can go up, which also increases the float adjusted market cap. And also, you know, a little bit of liquidity needs to improve. So there could be a capital raising or something like that that improves the liquidity. So basically the task today was, you know, what's on a good trend that uh, could be in the future getting into the ASX 300. And then obviously if it keeps going over, over the coming years beyond that, it can get into the ASX 200. Why are we interested? Because as, when it gets into the ASX 300, there's going to be more fundies looking at it there's going to be some index funds looking at it um and then also you start having fundies start to front run inclusion into the asx 200 
And then when you get into ASX 200, you really get the tsunami of um, passive money coming in. And so, for example, you know, when Prometicus got into the ASX um, 200, it was a few years ago now, but its share price went on a massive run because, uh, you know, basically there was all of this um, passive money buying and it doesn't care about the valuation. Yeah. So, um, and then, yeah, that's basically what we're looking for. Of course, it doesn't always mean it's going to go up. If it does get into the index, it's not a guaranteed thing. Sometimes you'll get um, the inverse happens. And if a company is uh, very good, very dodgy, um, when it gets into that ASX 300 or ASX 200 index funds buy it, they then make those shares available for short sellers. So sometimes for the dodgy companies, it works against them. But, you know, generally for the good companies, it's a positive thing. I 100% agree. And I love that. Um, chat and uh, the strategy of it, because like you said, once it gets on a roll, the money keeps coming in because they just keep moving up, you know, the ladder, so to speak. And yeah, the pool of potential buyers grows, right? And the thing is for us, you know, for in investors, analysts, we always want to find that stock that goes from zero to hero, right? For, that climbs that that ladder of that. And you can, you know, find those gems that, that happen. So it's a good exercise to go through to see the story. So Let's go with it. I'm excited. I've got a whole list over here. And you've got to tell me if this is a pretender or a real the real deal, whether this is actually things. Because we see, you know, the thing is, we've seen a lot of the spec stocks in a, in a boom, maybe. Like, uh, you know, tech boom. A lot of those spec stocks went up. Huge market caps. They're getting included in this AX300, whatever. And then they, you know, fall in a heap because the market doesn't love them anymore. And then they fall out again. So we don't want to find those. We want to find those stories that are legit, right? They can keep going and so on. And the same thing happens in the lithium booms as well. And there's a couple of stocks I actually want to talk about because it's actually quite interesting whether they are the real deal or not. So apologies. First of all, I had a really sneeze attack when you were talking. So apologies for that, but no idea what's going on. So I'm going to the first one. And this is a very controversial stock, um, uh, Claude, and that's CTT satire. <laughs> that's in that that list of ASX three, sorry, ASX all ordinary um, index. So, is this a pretender or a real deal? Because look at the chart. The chart looks actually very, very good, right? So there is momentum behind this. It if it stays like this during the, the week. You're probably thinking, I want to buy this, right? So, tell me your thoughts. Well, this is an interesting one. So first of all, in terms of index inclusion, I think it's a decent, it's a good candidate because the the um, CEO and founder has been selling down. So that's going to increase the um, the float adjusted market cap. Um, mm -hmm. And also the share price is going up, also going to increase it. So there's a good chance it's going to be getting more liquid, getting big enough to get into the ASX 300 if it keeps up this momentum. And then the second thing is... Um, Look, the thing against it is it's in retail. Retail is generally getting killed right now. So that's the concern. And then the final thing that perhaps addresses that concern is that this is more in luxury retail, which reportedly is not getting hit as hard. Hit as hard. So for me, that second point about the, it being retail and retail being hit hard, that is what causes me the most concern. And that probably means it's not my favorite stock we're going to be talking about today, that's for sure. Uh, but you know, you could take the other side of that and be like, yeah, but luxury is going to be fine because rich people are fine. So we'll All see. Right. So I'm going to put this as a no. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a no okay. from me, but I, okay. I do I do still think it's worth discussing because it's like a soft no where I'm like, yeah, I think no, but I could well be wrong. Okay, fair enough. I definitely wouldn't bet against it. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I, I'm also probably fan sitting on this one. I probably, you know, in a good retail environment, this could easily get included into the, into the ASX 300. So you know, is it there? Oh yeah. If we if we have a good retail environment again, I definitely see this getting in eventually. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So for the moment, no. But it's an interesting story. Okay, let's go to the next one. DVP. Um, let's have a look at these charts, and maybe maybe it's probably my my field term to give you a bit of a spill on this one because of course it's in that it's in that space of mining and mining services. So I'm not sure if you follow that story too closely, but I really like the company because it's got Bill Beamer on it. You know, the chart's actually quite decent. He's got huge plans to turn this into a multi-billion company right, from what I've been reading and hearing. Um, so for me, there's a good chance of getting there to that ASX 300. I think, you know, is it my favorite chart? No. Um, so maybe technically speaking, it might just sit there for a the little while, maybe just not quite ready yet, but down the track, candidate. So for me, I'm going to say with time, it will get there. 
but I'd I'd probably prefer other stories at the moment where um, you know it's pretty much ready to go, so to speak. Yeah. And look, all, all I'll say is uh, just on the on the numbers. You know, this got this one's got I think a nineteen percent Bill Bill Beer, Beerman you said that you admired. I think he yeah. owns nineteen point six percent. Mineral Resources got a thirteen percent of the company. There'd yeah. be probably strategic holders that they would be excluding from the market cap. So yeah. any of the sell down from either of those parties could help boost the liquidity. And look, I I generally think you know it, it's often a it becomes a thing like the share price goes up enough. One of the strategic sells down a bit that gives you more liquidity and boom, suddenly it's in the indexes. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. FCL. So, so far, probably two no's for us. Uh, FCL. Let's, let's look at that one. Another very interesting, whoops, sorry. Another interesting story um, because it's, it had that huge move up. Then it's come down back to the, the ASX um, all awards. What do you think about this one? Cause the chart starting to look better and better. Um, there's a bit of resistance around 220, but it's on the way up. So, is this enough for you to seeing this back to back through ASX 300? Uh, look, I think Jack Earl Investments, I see, is a, is a 50% holder. I'm, I'm going to guess that that's somebody associated with the founder um, from memory. I think it is. So, it would be the founder. Uh, I could check that. But if so, that's that'd be like one of the things that keeping it out of, uh, yeah, that is. It is the CEO's company. So he owns half. That's one of the reasons keeping it out of the index. Again, same dynamic. Any sell down from the founder plus a rising share price could see it get in. Look, I think this thing comes higher eventually. I can't say it's fundamentally approved, but it's definitely fundamentally improving. And that makes it interesting. Again, it's the kind of thing, it's the kind of janky thing that I would probably punt on if I was just a private investor that didn't have to tell anyone my dirty investing secrets. Um, but it's probably a little bit risky for me to get very confident about. But yeah, look, I best so far, so far, I would not be surprised if this is meaningfully higher in the years to come. All right, fair enough. And I'm probably with you, maybe just not quite there yet for me, but it is on the way, right? So yeah, it could be a couple of years in the wilderness, like, but yeah, once we see a bit of enthusiasm, sustained enthusiasm return to tech, uh, I'd say this is going up. Yeah, I agree. All right, let's look at the next one, which um, we're actually trending at the moment. We've got in our portfolio as well. Um, so I'm interested to see what you what you think of this one. But I think this one's, you know, again, charts looking good. Um, re, uh, travel is on the up for the moment. What do you see this one at? Yeah, I see this one as a good candidate for inclusion in the future, especially if it even just maintains where it is right now. Obviously, it's had a, a tough few years. Um, it's yeah, gradually been getting more liquid. And the, look, even if the share price just maintains it around where it is now, it, it's probably in with a shot. Let me just see where it's at um, in terms of market cap. Yeah, basically, I think this is a decent company doesn't get me super excited but i do think it's a decent yeah I'd, i mean i'd be trading the trade i'd be playing the momentum if that's what i was doing i mm -hmm. see no reason to get out of this and you know 420 million market cap yeah it's still got a bit to go um so probably one of the probably not too confident that it'll get into the asx 300 soon but at the same time uh it, it could it could do um it just needs to get like a little bit higher in terms of its market cap and then sustain that for, I think it's six months or whatever that they need to see. Yeah, I agree. I saw, you know, again, we like the company, but it just needs more time. So another no. But the insider no. holders for that one's not too high. So mm -hmm. I, I would say that it, you know, it's a decent chance of it in time. I agree. So it's still, it's still a trade. So just because it's not going to get into 300 doesn't mean we're, gonna, don't like, we're not going to like it. We still like the story. It's just, Oh, wait. Well, yeah, yeah. It was 300 is just a little bit further away uh, than some of the others. Now, this one is, for me, a big candidate. I really like this company. It's absolutely flying. Um, IPG, IPD Group. Uh, God, we talked about uh, enough about it, right? Uh, it's on a tear. What do you think of this one? Is this one's got a good chance? Yeah, I think that, um, I think it is got a good chance. I think that we've got a lot of shares locked up, which will be keeping it out of the ASX 200 for now. I mean, I guess it's 300 for now, but as it's a bit of a roll up and as some of these locked up shares come out of escrow, we might see a little bit of sell down, a bit of liquidity there. Mm -hmm. it's, going to, it's going to have to do more work in terms of getting liquidity and probably like just seeing some, a little bit of sell down before it gets in the ASX 300. But yeah, it's a good shot at it. And look, it, the momentum's great. I obviously regret getting out of this one. Gosh, you know, it wasn't that long ago that I was buying this. What was it in the high twos or whatever? 
yeah. and I've really shot myself in the foot by uh, just randomly selling all of not like just by you know streamlining my portfolio I've really got rid of a few good ones and this is a good one and I, I regret just not buying back in straight away as there was an opportunity to do so yeah look I, I think this has got probably so far the best chance the be- best chance of getting to the 300s of all the stocks that we talked about I mean we only talked about five but the, the fact is that momentum so they're probably the market cap might get there as long as they keep coming up with this 30 percent growth right which at the moment they seem to be on a quota quite a good wicket um so it's just a liquidity possibly is what might hold it back for the moment but like you said i mean with the roll up the coming the skills coming it's got the best chance for me so i really like it you know if you look the chart looks absolutely unbelievable really so for me it's a definite hold uh, and fingers crossed. Yeah, look, in terms of market cap, it's going to get there, no worries. Mm. Um, in the smallest companies in the ASX, there's there's a dozen or more that are smaller than IPG right now in terms of pure, you know, market oh, cap. Okay. So, so it's not going to have a problem there. Right. It's, just, it's just the liquidity that you're waiting. You need some of those shares to come out of escrow and maybe a little of it to join the market. Um, and it'll get, yeah, I think it's a good chance, Peter. I definitely okay. do. Thank you. Even if it, look, even if it trades flat now and you just get a little bit of liquidity out from the strategic holders, mm-hmm. you'd get there quite likely, I, I believe. All righty. I like it's it. Just, it's just it's got big insided ties up at tie up the moment because I think they get escrowed when they, they put their money in there. Fair enough. Latin resources. All right. So, you know, we, we looked at this whole list and I picked some good charts, but some of them, you know, are, are they frauds pretty much? <laughs> That's my question. Are they just one of those fad stocks that goes up to a ridiculous market caps and then comes back? Is LRS in that category? Look, possibly. I mean, that's that's the problem. Why, you know, I, I admire the results that come up with the last few few times out of uh, Brazil. You know, is it the true reflection of the market cap, what it could do? You know, this is a this is the thing. It's I am very skeptical of a lot of these companies in the mining space that they have the booms and busts, unfortunately. Well, uh, this so might I don't trust it. I just don't. This trust might it. be a good example of when getting in the index is sort of bad news for them, mm. um, because basically the bigger the index they get in, the cheaper it becomes for short sellers to start sniffing around it. And sometimes that's what you see. You know, gets in the ASX two hundred. Suddenly, it's cheap for short sellers to um, short sell them. And then so suddenly, someone has an incentive to start saying, "Hey, this is actually a, quite a bad stock." And that, and and that can and fraud. We've seen so many examples of that happening, right? Where we've had a small market cap discovery of something or big fad of a mining commodity, booming goes up and then it comes back as hard as you know. I've been looking at some, for example, not Novonix. Remember Novonix? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Have a look at this chart. I mean, I remember that was wasn't that an inclusion in an ASX All Ordinaries? Look at that 11 bucks, 12 bucks. Down to a dollar. Wow. There you go. I mean, there's just so many of those examples. The classic though. example is LKE as well, because yeah, that one know. is exactly what I said. Like, basically, yeah. it got in the ASX 200. Yep. That that means it can like short sellers can suddenly short sell it really easily. Yeah. And um, from memory, the CEO also dumped tons of shares. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just reading the last announcement they came up was just disastrous. <laughs> yeah, so it's like literally, <laughs> you don't want to play this game with uh, something that's a bit dodgy, funded, like that's dodgy fundamentally. So I would say, generally speaking, I would never be looking at oh index inclusion if it's just a sudden, you know, it's a, yeah, yeah. It's a bad stock, no revenue, just a story. Yeah. What you're looking for the ones is that are building their profit, building their profit over the years, because they're yeah. the ones that can, you know, start having that dynamic where they're not going to get suddenly short sold and funds are going to be sniffing around getting involved. This is another good example. Yeah, PPK. I mean, I, I, most recent one, uh, it, which I'm worried about is Vulcan as well. It's it's just been coming down and coming down. So even though we've had good price bounce from lithium, I mean, look at that. It was 16, 17 yeah. bucks down to four. <clears throat> and I just, we, you know, fundamentally, I just think it's just not going to get there. So I just, just on the... Oh, go on. No, no, I just, I just, you know, just to me, that's just got the same sort of hallmark of what we just, what we just seen, right? So that's my, that's my concern with these things. So I, I would never jump on the sort of stories like these Vulcans, like the PPKs, like the Novel Nixes, um, and expects, you know, all the way to the moon and being a ASX 100 story forever. Yeah. 
All right, we move on about to the next one. And the next one is a good one. Um, we've been trading this. We've been doing quite quite well with it. LAU, uh, what do you think? Oh, look, I think that it's good business and it's exactly the kind of thing that I would be looking for in this kind of play. Mm -hmm. uh, my concern would be this one's got a ton of strategic investors in it and it's super liquid. So I think we're going to be waiting a while before this gets in. All right, fair enough. Fair enough. And because it's got it's Washington ASOL Pats and strategic investor. I think the Fox family are in, in there. I'm assuming none of that counts to the float adjusted market cap. Plus, mm. it's just a liquid anyway. So that's what's probably keeping it out and may continue to keep it out for a long time. Yeah. So it, it's a good candidate, but it's not going to get there because of that li liquidity issue. Oh, it's a, and that doesn't mean it's a bad company, by the <laughs> way. Not, it's like it, just because it's not going to get in the <laughs> ASX 300 doesn't mean it's not going to go up. Like it may well go up. Yeah, yeah, of course. But it's 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 sad that you know it it it's got that hurdle that it can't overcome because of liquidity. But, you know, I don't even see it as sad because the best <laughs> ones are the ones that um the later they get into these index, mm -hmm. the better the fireworks, basically. That's true. that's true. Because you know, that's like PME was a great example. It got in the ASX 200 super late. It was already a really big company when it got in there. Mm -hmm. Um they're they're the ones that go the best. The earlier they get in, if they get in where they're really small, they're still very liquid, blah, blah, blah. They tend to move a lot less. They usually do a cat raise to let the instos get in easy. That's the worst. You want one that's tight and a liquid, and then it still eventually gets in, and that's when you get the fireworks. All right. Fair enough. And I agree. I agree. All right. Next one. And this is an interesting one because it's a huge market cap, yet it's in, you know, outside of the top 300. It's really strange, but tell us about this one. My make you is actually the chart's looking pretty good. Um, yeah. Okay. So I like this one. Don't own it, but I do think it's a good candidate. The reason being, look, the thing that's kept this one out is not its size. It's its large insider holding. So you can sort of chop its market cap in half or more to get its float adjusted market cap. Mm -hmm. And its liquidity is low, but liquidity has been improving. So definite candidate in my view. Okay, fair enough. So I'm going to actually mark that one as a as a tick then. Um, all right, let's move on to the next one. Matter Group, which has been absolutely flying you know, up the charts, so to speak, up the, uh, up the 300 charts, but hasn't quite got there yet. It's still outside. So it should make a good candidate because the market's kept now about a billion bucks now. So what do you yeah, think? Yeah, and it's got pretty good liquidity. The thing keeping this one out is, the thing that has been keeping out this is the large insider holding by uh, Mr. Matter himself. Mm -hmm. who I think owns 50% plus, 60% plus even. Um, I'll just check that for you. Um, yeah, 56% Mr. Aluk Benjamin Matter there. So, um, and also there's Ian Burton, which is my concern. Uh, what's his Ian Burton? Um, so he, I'm thinking, he's a non-executive uh, director as well. So, We've got two directors owning a ton of this company, mm -hmm. but that is what is keeping Matter Group out basically is because these strategic holdings would be considered not part of the float adjusted thing. All right. So it's a good candidate and I think it will get there eventually. Um, and one way is that if it might be one of those situations where you could see a little bit of a sell down from these directors yep. and that might have the effect of putting the share price down a little bit. but then that might also have the effect of putting it into more of a candidate of getting in the indices. Fair enough. Now, you know, with capital raisings anyway, you know, along the way, that could, that could also, I mean, if they're going to acquire something, for example, in the, you, just never, you just never know. I mean, the thing is... Oh, that, look, if they keep on their trajectory, they'll get in even yeah, without a sell down. Exactly. That's exactly. So, but they, they, their market cap just needs to be that much bigger because mm -hmm. for the calculation that gets yeah. into the index, it's getting reduced. Look, it's flying so quickly that... <laughs> but it's big enough like you know it's definitely you know mm. even if we say okay reduce its market cap by 70 percent mm. it's still yeah it still could be get knocking on the door eventually so uh yeah definitely a possibility okay. maybe not quite yet we need to probably see either continued strength or a little tad of a sell down but look if they just sold down five percent of the company that it helped and then keep the current share price for six months and then probably they're getting close fair enough all right i like this one so i'm going to give this a tick then so we've got so far three ticked nxd is the next one uh next dead which is 
a education company, or what do you think of this one? Because I think this is not a bad, again, not a bad looking chart going up. What do you see this one? Oh, I, I see it as a good company, probably not the strongest candidate right now um, for getting the ASX 300 too soon. Mm -hmm. uh, just being the reason being just because it's, it's still a bit small um, compared to some of the other ones out there. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't have too much of uh, insider shareholding going on. Um, so like less than 20%, I think. So I think, you know, most of that market cap uh, would be considered free float. And so it doesn't need to be massive market cap compared to like, you know, some of the others we've talked about today, like uh, Matter and Macquarie. But um, yeah, it's just a bit small at only three, um, 350. It's not bigger than that many companies that are yeah, currently the in there. Market cap, market cap is on the cusp. So it needs to sustain this. It's probably, like you said, I think there's a long way ahead of it still to get to the 300. But, you know, it, it is on the way. But it, you know, see, like, yeah, it, it's a definite candidate in the next couple of years. Okay. Next one. And that's, of course, you're going to be your favorites. It is one of my favorites. We always love this company. Um, the good old objective, OCL. What do you say? Yeah, so this one, I definitely think, uh, look, look, it's getting killed by lack of liquidity. It doesn't get in there because of lack of liquidity. And it also gets a bit, it has historically been very penalized by the fact that its founder owns like about 60% of the company, mm -hmm. um, 65% of the company, right? So you've got to basically get its market cap of what is it, a billion. And then you only only can count about, um, oh, it's actually 1.3 billion. So 1.3 billion. Um, times 0.35 gives us 4.55. So, so, so 455 million. So that's its float adjusted market cap. That is probably going to be enough for it to get a look in. So it's, it's probably ticking that box. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it's not a clear winner on that box. It's, it's probably, you know, borderline there. But the thing that's absolutely destroying it is just the lack of liquidity there. And no real signs of liquidity improving of late. If anything, liquidity is getting worse because the company's buying back its own shares. So, <laughs> yeah, I saw that today. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man. But you know what? At the end of the day, it's still a great company. And, you know, Please, just, look, I think it will get in there eventually. Yeah. Um, but we've still got a liquidity problem. And look, I think what we're going to need, like the founder shows no real signs of selling down. Um, one of the other directors has been selling it down a little bit every year. Mm -hmm. um, so that will add to liquidity over time and that will that will sort of compensate a little bit for the buyback anyway. Yeah. Um, so overall, I think it's getting more liquid. I think it's getting closer. But again, probably in that box for different reasons, same as NXD, I'm looking probably a couple of years before All right. <laughs> well, it just, gets it. Hey. But I, I really like, like it's, it's, I own this one, by the way. So full disclosure there. And, and I really like it because as I was saying to you before, you know, the later they get in and the less liquid they are, usually the better the firework. No, okay. this is not a, not a, that's not a hard rule or anything, but that is sometimes what you look like. That's what I look for. It's a big one. It's 1.4 already. You know, we're talking about other companies that are in the index that are like 300, 400 million market cap. So you can see what a big impact that um, lack of liquidity and the large insider holding can have. All right. So next one. It's a small one, but you know, it's been up, upgrading, upgrading, winning contracts, winning contracts. What do you think of SRG? So SRG is another one I own. I agree that fundamental news flow looks good. Obviously, there's like some concerns in the economy that could affect these guys. Mm -hmm. I think it's around 65% uh, of their revenue is sort of recurring in nature. So I'm not expecting a blow up. On top of that, in the last financial year, they've signed $1.1 billion of work, which is supposed to cover them for the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. Now they're like, you know, around 600 million revenue per year company. So, and FY 2023 is not even quite over. But let's just say they land on 1.1 at the end of it. I think they're looking okay. Like, I think they're looking pretty decent um, in terms of where they're at. Uh, so, yeah, like, I'm holding it. I'm not feeling super bullish. The main reason that holds me back is that uh, the founder did sell some shares. and Not the founder, I beg your pardon. The managing director did sell some shares. He's not the founder. And he doesn't have a ton of shares. And he did it to buy a house or whatever. 
And I'm like, yeah, but you know, come on, your multi-million dollar house, that's like an investment itself. And on top of that, you get paid a ton of money every year. So don't tell me you need to sell shares to like buy a house. Like you're buying an extra nice house if you need to sell shares. So that's what hold me back on this one. But mm-hmm. otherwise, I, I like the fundamentals in terms of wh- when it can get into um, when it can get into the index. All it needs is a higher p- share share price, Peter. Like if if we just saw well, look, this- uh, the share price is actually not no, you're obviously climbing. It had a little bit of a misstep last four weeks, but it's getting back over those trends. So probably a buy again in the end of the week if it stays like this. Yeah. How much would you think? A dollar out of it? for? Yeah, for like, so the thing is, no, mm-hmm. well, the thing is, I think it could be a good one because mm-hmm. it's really not in that ASX 300 yet. And it is very much a small cap. 371 million market cap as we talk today. Okay. I think most of that, like it might lose, you know, five or 6% in, in less than 10% in strategic mm-hmm. holding. Mm-hmm. So it's probably about 350 float adjusted. That is, you know, there's there's probably about 10 companies or a bit more around 10 companies yeah. in the ASX 300 right now that mm-hmm. are smaller than that. So it just needs to do a little bit more on the, because um, yeah. some of these retailers are coming out. That's the thing, right? Because we know retail has been having well, a bad time. 100%. So there's going to be some spots that are going to be, you know, made available. Exactly. Some of these. Okay. I understand. Exactly. Looking good. I'm going to give this a tick. So you're pretty bullish on this. That's good. Let's move on. Yeah, well, I hope you're, I hope you're right, Peter, because I, this, is, this would be a great one to get in because it just needs to just do a little bit more to get in. And it might not happen. I wouldn't expect it to come in now, but it did a capital raising and that's what helps it, you know? Yeah. And, and, and look, it's climbing back up. So like I said, at the end of the week, it's like this, you're in. Yeah, the cap All raising right. adds to liquidity. It adds to the market cap. It just needs to get that share price up probably to new all-time highs and at least bouncing around there. And it's surely it's got to be, and it also depends what the rest of the market will do as well. You know, like if right. some of the other stuff at the bottom of the index now comes down, then that's going to help these guys get in. Cause we got a bunch of stuff like, I mean, Lake resources we we're talking about before, surely that's going to get out of the ASX 300. Nova Nix we were talking about before, surely that's still in. So really some well. of these ones that were old hype stories, their days could be numbered, but they're still yeah. in there at the moment. All right. SNL is the next one, which is, we, we both loved. I mean, the management has been absolutely sensational. Yeah, so I, this is amazing. We've talked about a lot of my stocks today. We shouldn't do this too often. Um, but just shows we're good investors. I mean, that's what it proves. Yeah. Well, I don't know. But um, SRG I own, SNL I own, prefer SNL to SRG. Um, but the chances of SNL getting in the index anytime soon are not good. Well, it's just nowhere, well. it's nowhere near liquid enough. Yeah, fair enough. Well, there's no point speaking about it because like, I agree with that. It's just the, the illiquidity of this is ridiculous. Um, and that's what's going to hold it back. Even though the company is going great guns, you know, that could be like one of those Macquarie's where it gets to a billion, two billion market cap with nothing. <laughs> exactly, exactly. We've seen with Macquarie and OCL, it can go to three times as big as SNL if it's that it's in a liquid stock. So, hey, maybe in five, 10 years, we're like, Cheering it on when it gets in. All right, let's look at uh, an interesting company that we don't really ever talked about. I think it's Chrysalis Corporation. Uh, sorry, Chrysos Corporation, not Chrysalis. I think Chrysalis, Chrysalis Corporation, which actually does new um, way of processing gold, right? Um, which is quite interesting. Um, it hasn't been around for very long, as uh, listed on ASX, that is, but it is gaining traction, winning new contracts out of the big boys out there. Um, so what do you think, Abby? Do you know anything about it? And what are the chances here for SC79? I have, I'm not aware of it, I'm sorry to say. Uh, so I, don't, I can't really comment on the fundamentals mm-hmm. at, at the moment. In terms of, let me just have a quick look. In terms of if it could get in, unless there's escrow shares and it's staying, it's a 300 million market cap, still a bit small. Um, and then in terms of the ownership, yeah, 30% hot tied up there with, um, who is it that they've got there? Um, yeah, 30% in, I'm guessing, um, oh, various, various individuals. Oh, this is, is it, is that your guy, Bill Beeman again involved in this one? Possibly. Yeah, he is. He, is he, he owns, on the board or he owns on some shares? <laughs> yeah, he owns one point. I don't know there what his go. role he's, is with he's the company. He's very clever. He's a great investor, I tell you. 
<laughs> yeah, William James Beeman, um, 1.1 million shares there. So, yeah, look, a little bit tied up in the the chairman owns um, 8%, um, but I don't know if they would be, cons- I don't know which one of these would be out of the float. But either way, this one's going to have to, yeah, definitely going to be a while before this gets knocks on the door of the ASX 300. But the main thing I'd say you'd be looking for is it, it, its share price will need to go up, I reckon, because it, it's just not quite big enough yet. Yeah, and I agree. Look, I think just from the uh, just being listed on ASX, I think it's just too early. You know, it's yeah. only been listed for just over a year, um, and it still hasn't even found its feet yet. I don't think for me anyway. And, so, and also, it's quite a liquid, so yeah. perhaps an interesting stock. But yeah, I'd say it's going to be a while before that one that one gets anyway, in. Not a bad looking chart. So I'm you know, for a trade, we could we could definitely trade it, but not for the moment. Let's let's see what we go with the next one. Okay, LGL. Now probably that one. You really haven't heard much about uh, me and me and David found this one out on on the charts, um, and it's actually a flower company, um, Claude. So I'm not sure if you know much about it, but look at the chart; it's it's starting to pop. <laughs> so I, I always learn it. I always get to find a new new holding here and there from you and Dave. Yeah, what do you think? Because we found a this one idea. interesting. Oh uh, well, I don't know. Like, I definitely uh, look. I don't think that this one's. Um, going to be again it's a bit too small 320 mil okay cetera, cetera. yeah i mean look but a quick glance at it tells me there's been a little bit of um director buying in fact 250k worth so that's cool there you go so if you look at the chart it hasn't been a great performer it's only the last maybe last few months right. that it's starting to find traction uh the sales are up. and i think the reason why is that they sell a lot of flowers to china by the way so china's opening up you know, they're selling whether it's flowers, whether it's petals, whether it's you know products out of the flowers. That's what they sell. Um, so you know, it's a huge market up, presumably over in China. And that's why maybe it's starting to look quite interesting. Whether this is a story for me as a fundamental story, probably not. But it's interesting to see that it is in the AS, uh, all odds index and it's getting better and better with directors buying. So one to watch, but not for me. I'm not going to give this a tick at the moment. And like you said, I think it's too small. You just do way way more. World, right. world, world leaders in uh, floral innovation, they say. There you go. There you go. It's something for you to read, Claude. We found you something to have a read about. Definitely. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next one. Like a podium, L-Y-L. Um, really great looking chart, I have to say. Um, you know, another engineering group. What do you think? Uh, like a podium, I don't know. I don't, are, are we sure that one's not already in? Yeah, I think he was on. Was it was, it on, it was on that list, was it? Uh, yeah. Look, I think, I think that the only thing against like a podium, then. Sorry, mm-hmm. I I didn't see that. I didn't notice that one. Um, yeah. Uh, the only thing against it. Yeah, you're you're dead right. By the way, Peter, it totally, yeah, hundred percent correct. Um, it is definitely uh one that could be in the ASX three hundred. I'm sure it's mostly been. It's probably been in the ASX three hundred before. Mm-hmm. And I'm guessing that the main issue here is that its share price has come down. And so the chances are that as we, oh no, it's the share price. Is, uh, I think what happened, I, thought, I think what happened was they had a, another business which is sold. And it hasn't it come a, down. Yeah. So it, so it was, the price was really high. They sold like a big business. The share price obviously had to readjust because of that business that was gone. And now it's sort of coming right. But this is all like re- readjusted, I believe, right? So, I think that's what happened. I got here. totally confused. It has been recently added to the all odds. Not mm-hmm. so you're that's why I got confused. I for some reason thought it had been added to the and I missed it on the list. So you're right. And I think it's been recently added to the all odds. If it keeps that mm-hmm. I was just got confused with a right. different company then. So I apologize. And um yeah, I think it's a totally a candidate. It's got a four hundred and something million dollar market cap. It's mm-hmm. recently been added to the all odds. If it just maintains and, and grows it a little bit, then it's totally a candidate. I remember, though, I'm pretty sure it's LYC and LYL. I always get confused in my head, so I'm just checking. Yeah. Yes, this one does have the non-executive chairman who owns uh, 22%. It has an executive director which owns who owns 7%. So between them, 30%. Not too bad. That probably takes the market cap down to the cusp of the ASX 300. So if we just see a little bit higher um, share price or one of these guys sell down a little bit, that mm-hmm. could get it into the ASX 300. So therefore, I actually think you're dead right. And I'm sorry I missed it, but I think this is a good candidate. Okay. Well, I'm going to give this a tick then. It's looking good. 
All right, two more before we go. So let's wrap this up with two more. MRM, which has been on a recovery path, it's been a dog for a long time and the conditions changed for them to the positive. So they've been going quite well. What do you think of MRM? Um, let's see. So obviously as a company, I'd be a little bit cautious of it just because it's so cyclical being such a long-term dog. Um, but in terms of its market cap, 420 million could get there. Um, Hallam Investments owns, who is that? Because they own 30% Hallam Investments. Um, hmm. The yeah, I'm guessing, I'm guessing that might be a strategic investment. We should probably be acting to keep it out of the um, of the ASX 300. So again, we might be waiting for a little bit of a sell down on that one. Okay. Then this is the nice thing with it. Once it gets over that a dollar, it didn't say staying there for some some months, right? So that's a bonus for the for the market share price. Um, I, you know, being a dog, you you want to see some recovery and then sustain that recovery. So at least that's that's a good thing. Liquidity, like you said, maybe that's the one that I think it's one of those things though, because like it's got a 30 something percent shareholder. If they just sold like some of their holding, then that could see it. Um that All right. could so see we won't it get give enough it a liquidity. Approval on this one. We'll move to the last one, which I think you'll probably like, and that's PSI, uh insurance company and insurance companies have been flying recently. So tell yeah. me, the chart looks actually doesn't look too bad. What do you think of this one? Yeah, I think that the main thing that's kept this out is the lack of liquidity in the stock. Um, and of course, you never really know when liquidity is going to change, mm. but it is a roll up. So it does tend to, you know, have need for more capital from time to time. So in the fullness of time, I would expect that its liquidity will increase. Uh, you also have a bit of an insider holdings there. Um, so there's sell down possibilities, um, but it's not too big. So I think, yeah, the main thing keeping this one out so far is liquidity and Lots of things can improve liquidity. A capital raising for an acquisition could improve liquidity. Just, you know, some shareholders deciding to sell could improve liquidity as well. So overall, I think this is a good candidate for inclusion and I like it. Okay, so we'll give this a, a tick. Okay, so I've got six stocks. Tell me your favorites before we wrap, wrap, wrap it up. So I've got IPG on there. We gave it a tick. Uh, MAQ, MAD, SRG, LYL and PSI. Which is your best candidate for the ASX 300 inclusion out of the those? The best two. candidate for inclusion. Mm -hmm. In the new term, of course. So the, the, yeah, the, yeah. The, so say the, them again, the, just one more time. Yep. IPG Group, mm -hmm. um, Macquarie Telecom, or Macquarie yeah. now, I think technology it's called, Meta Group, um, SRG Global, uh, like a podium, and PS Insurance. It's a tough one. Mm -hmm. um, I think, oh, if those, they're all good candidates, but they all kind of need something to happen. Yeah, to, that's right. So which is, which is the one you think most is going to happen for it to get it in, in, included into that 300? It's, it's a tough one. I think LYL is actually, I haven't, didn't have a close enough look at it, but it's actually, a, it's actually a pretty good candidate because I think it's a little bit liquid. Okay. okay. Like it's got a bit of liquidity there. SRG just needs to get a bit bigger. Mm, very hard to choose. Uh, <laughs> I can choose. Uh, uh, okay, I I'll go with mine first. I'm, I'm, look, even though there might be a little bit of liquidity issue, I think Matter Group is probably the best candidate for me. It's got that yeah. market cap sewn up, right? That's no problems there. Yeah, um, so the company, it's been on a roll. So the only thing obviously you can ask about is the liquidity. Is it going to pass the mustard over the next three to six months? Look, I, I, if it keeps going at this rate, yes. That's the thing. I mean, that's what you're yeah, going to look the, at. But... I think it's good. It just, yeah. I reckon Matter Group as well. It's a billion dollar market cap. Yeah. Even if we only take, even if we, all it needs is a tiny sell down from one of the insiders and I reckon it'll get there. So oh, wow. for that reason, I think Matter Group's a good, good candidate. But if SIG just has a bit of a share price run, then I think that's the best candidate. All right. Well, call it a day because we had a really good chat about these stocks. It's really quite interesting and quite fun. So thanks for very much for joining me, Claude. And I'm going to do it again next week. We're going to just talk about the top 300 stocks. So, you know, the, the stocks that are between the 200 and 300 million mark, um, sorry, 200 and 300 ASX mark, and we'll talk about whether they can get up to 200. This well, is going to be 
that's exciting because you got to if you before we do that, Peter, you got to check out my article on um, a rich life, which is which is called um, ten stocks that I think could enter the S and P ASX two hundred soon. Oh, well, I'm, I'm going in right now. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. Cheers for that call. Have a great day, and thanks everyone for listening. All right. Have a great day. Thanks for the chat, and um, have a good day, everybody.